What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be installing a dual battery setup on my Subaru Crosstrek. I've actually been looking forward to this install for a while. I'll be happy to have it done. You know, there's so many benefits to having a second battery. I can use it to power my lights, any camping equipment I might need, and not have to worry about draining my main battery. So let's just get started and jump right in. Okay, so here's what we got. We're gonna kind of figure this out together. So here's the dual battery. This is gonna be my second one. It's actually a case that I found. Just kind of makes it easier. That way I don't gotta mount it in the trunk. I mean, it's gonna be in the trunk, but it'll be in this case. So I got the Deep Cycle AGM battery in the case. Then It'll just wire up just like this. And then it has terminals on the outside of it. And that's where I'll have the heart and ground wire going into. And then the case itself is kind of cool. It has a 12 volt adapter built in, uh, two socket breakers. So it's pretty nifty to have. I'm happy with it. It also has a USB port. I mean, I probably won't use any of these because I'll have my own up back there but it's nice to have and then I got the Renology 40 amp a, uh, DC to DC inverter so this is how I'm going to connect my starter battery to the auxiliary battery I was initially going to use a battery isolator so I bought one but then I realized if I use this, both batteries had to be the exact same. But with the DC to DC charger, I can keep my starter battery the same and then use that AGM deep cycle battery as my second one. And this will monitor all the inputs and outputs so I don't kill my battery. All right, so I'll show you what I have an idea of doing. So. I'll actually just put this up on the screen so you can see it better. But, so you see I have the alternator going to my starter battery. And the starter battery will be going to a 50 amp socket breaker. Then from the socket breaker, I'll be going to the DC to DC charger. And then the DC to DC charger, I'll go to a 60 amp fuse. And then I'm actually gonna go kind of go overkill and put another 60 amp fuse on the other side. That way I'm protected on both ends. If the, something happens, it'll just blow the fuse instead of leaving this the hot wire. And then I'll ground the auxiliary battery in the trunk somewhere. Still not 100% sure where I'm gonna do it, but it should be pretty easy. And then th there'll be aux power going for the fuse box to the DC to DC charger. And what that'll do is it'll only give the DC to DC charger power when the car's owned. That way that's the only time the batteries are connected is when the car is running. So if the car is off, your auxiliary battery can't drain your starter battery. So I mean it should be a pretty easy install. Um, right now I'm just going to wire up all the wire ends and get it ready to install in the car. So in wiring something like this up, hold on I'll put the diagram back up. You want to make sure your fuse is as close to the power source as possible. Because if the fuse blows, anything after the fuse will become dead. There'll be no power going to it. And this is just safer for fire precautions or anything like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use 4-gauge wire throughout the whole wiring process. And from the starter battery, I'm going to have it, the power come out. And I'm actually going to go into this socket breaker here. It's a 50 amp one. And this way, I can just, at the push of a button, I can depower the whole system if anything happens. And if it does blow, I don't have to keep changing the fuse. I can just fix the problem and then just reset the socket breaker. All right, so I'm gonna get this wired up. I have this wire here. And uh, this is what I'm gonna take from the starter battery to the socket breaker. I do gotta cut the tip off and put in, because the socket breaker doesn't take a tip, it just takes the wire, so have these wire cutters, try to get it as close as possible. Mm -hmm. All right, so got that snipped. And then uh, 
I'm also going to use these because I don't have wire strippers that big. So I'm going to try to use these to strip it. This end connected to the circuit breaker. This end will connect to the starter battery. And here's where the circuit breaker is. And then it'll come out this end and I'm gonna run it through my firewall and that's where it's gonna connect to the DC to DC charger. I'm not entirely certain where I'm gonna put this yet. I'm gonna try underneath my passenger seat. I'm a little nervous for that. So we'll just see how it goes during the install process. I right. wanted to show y'all how I hooked up the battery box. Pretty simple install. Uh, just it has cables on the inside of it. So just positive to positive, negative to negative. And just close it up. And it has a strap. That's what locks the latch down. Then it has a way to test it up top. So press and hold it. It's on four, it's a brand new battery. Then it has a 10 amp breaker and a 60 amp breaker. Then a USB port on this side and a 12 volt power adapter on this side. And then it has a positive and negative terminals on the outside of it. And that's why I'll hook up the starter battery. So it's a pretty nifty little box. I think it was like $50. I highly recommend it if you're gonna be doing this and you don't have a place to put the battery under the hood. This is just a lifesaver. I'm not gonna actually plug it up to the battery yet because I don't wanna be working with the live wire. So right now I'm just gonna figure out how I'm gonna run it. And then I'll cut the wire down and wire it up once I get it all the way through. So I'm just gonna tuck this end under here just to make sure I have enough to play with. And see if I can find a good spot to run it. So you can see I already have some stuff ran right here through the firewall. So I'm gonna run it through that as well. I wasn't really wanting to do it there, but I don't see any other good spot. So I'll run it through here. Head. Should be coming out right under here. All right, so I got it ran through, and I'm gonna leave a good bit up here just so I have enough room to mount the breaker. Then I can just tuck in the excess. I'm gonna use my Blue Eddy power station to power the heat gun, so I can uh, use it on the shrink wrap. You can also use a lighter if you don't have this set up. Uh, heat gun just makes it a little bit easier. Just be careful and don't burn your upholstery in the car or anything like that. So I got it. And it usually shrinks pretty fast. I love this heat gun. Alright. Alright, so we got the force tip on. I'm gonna let this heat gun cool off a little bit because it gets hot. I don't want to burn a hole in anything by myself. I got the charger and just make sure you're hooking it up to the right ends. One side says output. I'm not sure if you can see that. And then the other side has input. So we're going to want to connect to the positive side of the input. So make sure that's nice and snug. And then I believe right here is where the fuse power is gonna come in. And then the output wire will come out here and that's what will plug into the auxiliary battery. Use 14 gauge wire for the fuse power. Uh, you don't really need four, four gauge for it. So I'm gonna cut a good bit off. I'll probably end up trimming it down.
before I put the tips on the second half of the wire, I'm going to run it to make sure it's long enough. That way I don't got to do it twice. So I have it coming out here and this is why to plug into that. And I'll just figure out how I'm going to run this. Now you're going to hook this end up to the output side since this is the second half of the wire and it's what's going to be going straight to the auxiliary battery in the trunk. Now I have both wire ends connected to the charger but so the first half is the input and that's what's coming from the starter battery to the DC to DC charger. Second half is the output and that's what's coming from the DC to DC charger to the auxiliary battery. Now they're only connected to this. It's not connected to the battery up front and it's not connected to the battery in the back yet. I'm going to do all that last. I still got to run power from the fuse box to the charger itself. I'm going to use a fuse tap for that. And then in the back, I'm going to add a fuse to the wire. Then before I plug it into the battery, just as an extra precaution. So I'll actually do that step now. I'm going to use the fuse that's going to be coming off the auxiliary battery. I'm going to go ahead and wire it up. So now I got it wired up. Now I'm just going to close it. Then it just kind of snaps in place. All right, and that's it. So this will be coming right off the auxiliary battery. And this will go in to the DC to DC charger. I'm actually going to put another fuse at the other end of it. I just got to wait for it to come from Amazon. Now I'm going to take the piece of wire that I cut earlier of the 14 gauge. And I'm going to hook it up to my fuse tap. And this is what's going to power the charger. That way, there's only power going to it when the car's running. The fuse will tell it to activate. So that's nice and snug. Now I gotta figure out what fuse I'm gonna put it into. I want it an accessory fuse. That way it turns on when the car's on. When putting the fuse in the fuse tap, there's two sides. The side that has the wire coming out of it is gonna be where you put the new fuse. And the side without the wire is where you're gonna put the fuse in that you took out of the fuse box. for the new one. I'm going to run the wire, go ahead and stick it in there. Pull it through. Kind of got dark on me so it's hard to see. So I'm going to put the camera down for a minute. Now I decided I am just going to run the ground from the starter battery to the DC to DC charger and then from the DC to DC charger to the auxiliary battery. I just feel like that's just a better way to do it instead of trying to find a spot to ground it on the chassis. So I'm just going to prep the cable right now. Now I got the tip on and I'm just going to set the wire here beside the battery while I run it through the, the other end through the firewall. I'm just going to leave enough room so I have enough to hook it up and then I'll hide the wires after I get everything ran through. So I'm going to do that now. Yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and cut half of it. 
That way I don't gotta run as much through the firewall because I can kind of guess uh, c comparing it to the power cable. All right. So I got the ground coming in from the starter battery and I'm going to hook it to the input ground of the DC to DC charger and then I got the other end right here that's going to run to the auxiliary battery and that'll be connected to the output ground of the DC to DC charger. So let's get to it. And remember, I got nothing actually connected to the batteries yet. I'm going to do that very last. Just so I'm not working with any live wires and accidentally blow a fuse. I'll just get sparks or anything like that. Now I got both ends connected to the DC to DC charger. Remember, the auxiliary battery is going to be connected to the output. And the starter battery will be connected to the input. Now I got to finish running the ground wire. And I'm just going to get it ran, and then I'm going to tuck the power wire and the ground wire under once I'm completed with everything. I just don't want to tuck it too early to have to redo it for whatever reason. Now that I have all the cables ran, remember none of them are connected to the batteries yet. I'm going to connect the fuse power here from the cord I cut earlier to the DC to DC charger. And then I'll connect the starter battery and then the auxiliary battery. And that should be it. I might have to mess with the jumpers. We'll see when we get there. We'll go ahead and strip this wire. Well, this should be pretty easy. It just goes into the D plus one. It's a flathead screw that you have to unscrew all the way. And you just stick the wire in, make sure it's in there nice and good. And then just tighten it down. Make sure it's tight. You don't want to over tighten it and strip it. And then that's good. And right now, all the jumpers are switched off. When they're down, they're off. When they're all, when they're up, they're on. So I might have to figure that out. We'll see when we get there. Now I'm just gonna. Take one terminal off at a time to hook up the cables that I ran. So I'm going to do that right now. I got the negative and the positive connected to the starter battery. So I'm going to move down to the DC to DC charger. I'm going to test the power coming into the DC to DC charger. So when I plug this up, it should read around 12 volts. Then if the car is running, it should read around 14. So let's just test it out. All right, so I'm not sure if you can see it. But, you know, it's just kind of going all over the place. I don't have a good connection connecting it to the terminals. But I know it has power. Since the car's not running, the batteries aren't connected because the DC to DC charger is only activated by the fuse power when the car's running. So the power ends back here should read nothing. It might read a little bit, but it shouldn't really read anything. All right, so it's at zero. Now I'm going to go start the car, and when I start the car and I come back and read them, it should read between 12 and 14 volts. So let's try it out. Now I have the car running, so when I plug it up, it should read between 12 and 14. And that means that the inverter is doing its job. If you look, if you can see it, so it's at 14 volts, so we know it's connected properly. So the next step is just to plug these ends to the auxiliary battery. And then it's just clean up, and that's pretty much it. Just wanted to show y'all, you see how the light's are green? That way you know it's working. If it was green flashing or red, you would know you had a problem somewhere. But, but since it's steady green, you know it's connected right. 
Now I'm going to connect the end of the wires I have back here to the auxiliary battery. I'm going to do ground first. Make sure it's tight. I'm going to do positive. Not that end. Uh, plug the positive up. Alright, now I got both of those wired up. I'm going to start the car one more time just to make sure that the charger stays green. And it does. So everything's connected. It seems to be working good. Alright, so now everything's connected, it seems to be working good, so my next step is just to kind of clean up and hide all the wires. Alright guys, so that completes the install of hooking up a dual battery in my Crosstrek. If you have any questions, just leave them in the comments below. And as always, thank you for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe. Later!